Welcome to the hip joint, where Futurama fans get in free. Episode 2 introduces us to the remaining Planet Express employees before the crew gets sent on their first mission to the moon. Okay, we're here. The title, The Series Has Landed, comes from the Apollo moon landing, with the phrase, The Eagle Has Landed, being said after the lunar lander touched down on the moon's surface. The Eagle Has Landed. To start the episode, we meet Mr. Horrible Gelatinous Blob, voiced by Maurice Lamarck. His name will come up a lot, because he also voices over 40 characters. You've got a future around here. The man who keeps Planet Express running. Notifies next of kin, what have you. Hermes Conrad, voiced by Phil Lamar. My man witch! Admiral Crunch? Well, if you don't like that, try some Archduke Chocula. Sounds like the captain and the count finally got their promotions. Good for them. Oh my, I haven't picked a new captain yet. It's always so hard to choose. Leela seems like the best choice, and probably is, but I'm going to be reviewing her performance as captain. Buckle your sphincters! <laughs> Death by brain parasite. Yeah. Death by sonic diarrhea. Oh, and you don't want that. I think I might have to turn down captaining if sonic diarrhea is involved. Oh, sign the paper. Billy West's fifth appearance scuttles into the show in the form of... A grotesque stinking lobster! Dr. Zoigberg is equal parts good doctor and part butcher of anyone misfortunate enough to come under his knife. I'll kill you! Oh. There will be a vote at the end of this video for the funniest moment of the episode, and this line from Zoidberg is in the running. Uh, is there a human doctor around? Young lady, I'm an expert on humans. Rounding out the Planet Express team, for now, we meet Amy Wong, voiced by Lauren Tom. She is the professor's intern, but mainly... I like having her around because she has the same blood type as me. Hang on, Amy Wong? Of the Mars Wongs? Look, we're not as rich as everybody says. They are definitely that rich. Kaboom boom! This is the first time we see Bender's kleptomania in action. He was shown to be cheap in the first episode, but now we know he's not afraid to steal. I'm gonna be a famous hero, just like Neil Armstrong and those other brave guys no one ever heard of. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Got him! Leela says she doesn't want to screw up her first day as captain. Let's see how her actions reflect that. Nothing will go wrong. I hope all spaceships in the future have couches on them. I want to get to the moon this fast. Elon needs to hurry up. 87654321, blast off. Bender and Fry don't hesitate at all to let everyone know how lazy they are prepared to be. Too much work. Let's burn it and say we dumped it in the sewer. Why is Leela handing the keys to Amy? As captain, you think she'd be the only one to have access to them. This contradicts her earlier statement. I'd like to hold off any major screw-ups until at least my second day as captain. This stupid magnet is strong enough to pull the keys out of Amy's pocket, but so weak that they fall off this easily into the crate? Uh, greetings, Moon Man. We come in peace. Sal is one of the best recurring background characters, always showing up to deliver a great line and to deliver John DiMaggio's fifth voice credit. Ah, oh, don't get me started. Craterface is a character that only shows up in the first and last episode, the first voice of Tress McNeil, but this is not her best character. At least I still have my self-respect. <laughs> Bender seems to have an inconsistent relationship with magnets. Get it off! Get it off! Get it! Uh-oh. Bender pursues many dreams throughout the show, but folk singing will always be his first love. I guess a robot would have to be crazy to want to be a folk singer. As Fry and Leela start the ride, they are shown a scene from the Honeymooners. Bang! Zoom! Straight to the moon! A sitcom from the 50s. And well, I'll let Fry explain. And he was just using space travel as a metaphor for beating his wife. All these arcade games have great names, like Dodecapede, Mortal Cooperation, and almost like the writers can see the future with this gender-neutral pack person game. After getting caught trying to steal the ship's keys, Bender delivers one of his best lines ever. I'm gonna go build my own theme park with blackjack and hookers. In fact, forget the park. Fry crashes the buggy and Leela wastes all the oxygen, causing them to have to seek refuge in this moon dome where we meet the farmer. Trespassers, eh? The farmer shows up in six different episodes, and this is Billy West's sixth character. Coincidence? 
Looky here, city girl. Oxygen don't grow on trees. Now, I'm no scientist, but I think oxygen does grow on trees. Maurice Lamarck voices the Crushinator. And though Bender has many love interests throughout the show, the Crushinator will always be his first. A lady that fine, you got a romance first. A callback to some classic Dukes of Hazard chase scenes, complete with an alligator jump. <laughs> the Crushinator is one tough gal. Why was the professor watching that particular part of the moon? If he was just spying on them, surely he'd do something to help. But I am already in my pajamas. <laughs> it's that flag from MTV! I remember when MTV used the flag logo, and when they used to play music. I'll go build my own lunar lander with blackjack and hookers! At least we know what to get Bender for his birthday. So the package the crew delivered was full of the stuffed animals for the crane machine. But Amy just wins them all trying to get the ship's keys. They're basically bringing back what they delivered to the moon in the first place. Minus the crate they were supposed to throw in the sewer. Too much work. Let's burn it and say we dumped it in the sewer. It'd be so awesome to get to see this view of the earth. Bender just had to go back for the Crushinator, giving us this hilarious moment from the farmer and third choice for this episode's best moment. Aw, oh, dang it! Episode 2 has landed, and the crew's first delivery is complete. Sort of. And we get introduced to the rest of the Planet Express team. The candle that burns twice as bright burns half as long. Billy West is in the lead for highest character count, and we meet Sal, one of my favorite background characters. If I wasn't so lazy, I'd punch you in the stomach. I picked three of the funniest moments in the episode, and I want everyone to vote for their favorite down in the comments. Will it be Zoidberg's expertise? Uh, is there a human doctor around? Young lady, I'm an expert on humans. Bender's ambitions? Yeah, well, I'm gonna go build my own theme park with blackjack and hookers. Or the farmer's stupidity? Aw, oh, dang it! Vote now or comment your favorite moment of the episode.